Hey folks, how you doing? Back again with another video. In this, we are going to explore rotary machining extension, which is free until this month. I strongly recommend you to grab this opportunity. So, in this video, we are going to explore 4th axis rotary machining. Without further ado, let's get started. We use rotary machining for 3D solid surface models, such as camshafts and crankshafts. It has widespread application in the aircraft, automobile, petroleum and gas industry as well as the manufacturing of decorative parts and many other complex types of parts. So now we'll generate a rotary toolpath for this baseball bat. Let's begin by opening Fusion 360. Now I'd like to create the model of baseball bat using few commands. Change the units to inches because it becomes easy for us to model it with dimensions specified in this image. Alright, let's take a look at this image. The length of the bat is 32 inches. And by placing circles of equidistance, we can easily get the 3D model using log feature. So let's do that. I want to sketch on this plane. Also, I'd like to enable the 3D sketch because we'll be placing circles in different planes. And on the keyboard, draw a line in negative x direction. Let the length be 32 inches. Now select the line and press x on the keyboard for making it into construction. See on the keyboard. Draw a circle, center as origin and perpendicular to the line drawn. Now I'd like to create a pattern of this circle for loft. For that, select the pattern under create. Select this circle as our object. Select this construction line for direction. Let the number of instances be 9 and the distance be 32 inches. Perfect. Now that we created all the circles, it's time to add dimensions according to these specifications. D on the keyboard, the day of the circuit B. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. They changed direction, right? Don't worry, it can be corrected easily. Just undo the step and delete the pattern. Now try adding dimension 2 1 by 2, that is 5 by 2. Perfect. And repeat the same for all dimensions, likewise. Based on these specifications, Perfect. Now that we dimensioned all the circles, now I want to copy and move same circles before proceeding to the loft so that we'll get perfect model. Select this circle and press Ctrl plus C on the keyboard for copy and Ctrl plus V on the keyboard for paste. Move the circle using manipulators about 0.3 inches. Perfect. Now I want you to edit the dimension and change it to 1.5 inches. Similarly, Select this circle and Ctrl plus C and Ctrl plus V on the keyboard. Use the manipulators to change the position. Place the circle roughly in between. Now copy end circle and position it at a distance of 0.6 inches. Perfect. Finish the sketch and now we are ready for loft. Select the loft under create menu and select all these profiles. Perfect. It looks good for me. Click OK to confirm the loft. You have found the keyboard. Select this edge and fillet value be 1 inch. Perfect. We are done with the baseball bat model. Let's add the appearance to make it look better. Here on the keyboard, I'm gonna search for wood. I'd like to drag and drop cherry texture onto the model. Now it looks kinda realistic, isn't it? You guys did great job. If you observe here, we are having face at the front and a face at the back. These are references for holding the stock in chuck and tail stock. Save the model. I'm gonna rename it as baseball bat. Great. Let's switch to manufacture workspace for generating toolpaths. We'll create toolpath using only two methods. That is by using rotary toolpath and 2D contour for cutting the part. Before that, I'd like to run minimum radius analysis for this model so that it becomes easy for me to select the correct tool. Select the body. Now the maximum tool radius is 25 mm. I want to find minimum radius by holding on moving the minimum radius manipulator in here. If you observe it shows red. It means that at 25 mm we cannot machine this part. If we choose 25 mm 
I want to reduce this to calibrate radius roughly. Perfect. At 22 mm, I'm getting all the profiles machine. Let the units be metric and select the setup. In here, we'll define things such as WCS orientation, model, stock geometry, etc. You can select the specific machine if you have any. I want to select Z-axis and X-axis for orientation. I want Y-axis to be my Z-axis and X as it is. It tells you where your origin to be positioned. I want to select it based on stock box point. The stock point be this point. It already detected my model. If you have more than one model in project, you can specify here. Let's define the stock. I want to change the stock mode to relative size cylinder. The advantage of this mode is that it updates when you update the model. Let's correct the orientation by selecting X axis so that the axis becomes the stock axis. To hold the stock and to get this model exactly where we need, we have to hold the extra position of the stock inside the chuck. Let's add 50mm to the front and 50mm to the back. In the post process, I'm gonna add a comment rotary machining, baseball bat. You can change WCS if you have multiple setups. Awesome. Now that we created our setup, the magic happens now. Select rotary in multi-axis drop down. Now I want you to pay attention guys. We need to select the tool before proceeding. For that we need to consider the model geometry as per our minimum radius analysis. It is less than 22 mm. Thus it is always good to select less dia as possible. So, let's select the tool. I want to filter it by milling in sample tools, then filter the ball and mill. It sorted out all ball and milling tools for us. Among all these, 20mm dia and that 8mm flute length tool fits for this operation. Let's select that. Perfect. You can see that the tool was brought into our workspace. Don't worry about the orientation. We'll set all in a moment. You can make modifications to the speeds and speeds. It considers holders for deep cuts and prevents collision. In this, we don't need that. Let's define the geometry for our model. If you observe here, it is assuming that the Y axis has a rotary axis. But it's not correct. Because first comes first. X, Y, Z are three axes. For fourth axis, it starts with X. That is rotation. About X axis is the fourth axis. You can choose rotary axis or x axis in here because we've defined the x axis as rotary both results the same. The origin for this axis is the setup to origin again. Now we need to set the front and back limits. Either you can enter the values manually or you can drag these in workspace area. I want to move front limit to a little about minus 75. If we set the limit up to the model, it becomes very thin after mentioning this portion. Thus it may broke while machining because of the tool forces. There is no problem with the back limit. You can set angular limits by enabling it. Then you can choose specific model. And last but not the least, avoid touch surfaces. With this, you can avoid specific phases. We are gonna leave all the defaults in here. Coming to the passes. This is where you will define number of passes, accuracy, offset, stock to leave, feed optimization, etc. Coming to the direction, you can define the tool path to be from both climb or conventional. It is good to select both ways for saving machining time. Coming to the style, we have spiral line circular. Spiral will do a follow like a helix, continuously and uniformly. Line will move axially and circular will move circular passion. When it comes to changing the position, axially it take linearly and repeat circular motion. For this scenario, Spiral is perfect. You can set the tool offset if needed. You can leave the stock for finishing. Also, you can optimize the feed by enabling this. In linking, I would like to leave all the defaults as it is. Allow it to generate the tool path. Simulate the tool path by pressing Ctrl plus space on the keyboard. I want you to explore all options inside the simulate. I want to disable the transparent so that I can only have a stock. It looks good, but it's not removing all the material. This is because the step over distance under the passes. It is a good practice to find it at the end of the toolpath placed because it takes too much time to compute. Everything seems good in here. 
Now I want to mention the front face of the bat by duplicating the previous operation and making necessary changes. Let's edit the toolpath and the geometry. I want to move base limit close to front. Then I'd like to enable avoid touch surfaces. Select this face and increase the clearance to 5mm and click OK and allow it to generate the toolpath. Once it is done, play the simulation to check everything is correct. Yeah, everything seems good for now. Now I'd like to part it off. Select the 2D contour. I want to change the tool, apply the filter and this by using bullnose and me. If you observe, the maximum die of our model is 2.5 inches, that is 36 mm. So we are going to select a tool which is more than 36 mm. There are tools which are more than 36 mm float length, but I'd like to have less tool die. There are no tools matching my interest. There is one more way is that we can design custom tools. Select library and click on plus icon in here. I want to create bullnose end mill. Make necessary changes to cutter specification. The dia be 5 mm, the shaft dia be 10 mm, the overall length be 120 mm, the length below holder be 100 mm, the shoulder length be 100 mm, the flute length be 90 mm. Leave the corner radius as it is. Awesome. We added custom tool for our tool path. The tool was inserted into the workspace. Under geometry, select back and front profiles. Make sure that the direction is correct. Leave everything default in heights. Under passes, I want to check multiple depths. Let them be 5. Click OK to generate the tool path. Oh, we got a warning here saying that closed counter has no area. This is because of the front area selection. Seem that it is so small, it didn't detect the selection. Let's edit the tool path by double clicking on this icon. Inside geometry, cancel the selection. Now pay attention guys. Enable the second sketch and select the circle origin. And the circle at back side. Then click OK. Now. We didn't got warning. Let's simulate the tool path. Oh, we got a problem here. It's not cutting the whole part. Let's make one more edit. Under heights, I want to offset minus 15 mm. And under geometry, enter 14 mm as tangential extension. This increases the sideways offset. Then click OK to take the edits. Now it's perfectly parting off. Let's check at the front end. This looks good for me. After posting the code, you'll get the result like this. Thank you so much for watching. If you like our content, please consider subscribing and make sure that you turn on that bell icon to get notified each time when we upload a new video. If you are more interested in generative design, then this video is probably for you. If you are more into automobiles, then this video is probably for you. These are top 10 tips for using Fusion 360 to make you efficient in using it. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video.